Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my kitchen. In today's video, I have two super cozy, perfect for wintertime dinner recipes. So tonight I'm actually getting ready to make one pot chili mac, which I have been craving all week. And today is the perfect day to make it. They were calling for kind of like ice and sleet and stuff around here in North Carolina. So needless to say, it is really cold tonight and the perfect night for a big old pot of chili mac. So I'm excited to bring you that recipe. And also I'm gonna take you back in time a couple weeks to when we went on our camping trip up in Asheville. I made a chicken and orzo casserole, which I've shared a similar recipe before, but in this one I also made a homemade cream of chicken soup instead of using, you know, the obvious can of cream of chicken soup. This one was actually really easy and a whole lot better ingredients, obviously. So I'm gonna share all that in today's video. I hope you guys are excited. I think y'all are gonna like these recipes. And also I wanna give a big thank you really quick to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. We'll get more into that in just a minute. All right, so I am gonna be making our one pot chili mac in my Dutch oven tonight. I have my ground beef over here, but we're only gonna use half of this. You don't need a whole pound for this recipe. I'm sure you could use a whole pound if you wanted to bulk it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and half this and save the other half for later. All right, so I got my Dutch oven at about medium high heat. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. All right, to our olive oil, we're gonna add one diced onion. We're also gonna add two minced garlic cloves. I'm just gonna stir this and cook this for about two or three minutes to let it start to brown up, but we don't want that garlic to burn. And as always, I will have these recipes typed out in the description box below. So that's where you'll be able to find all the exact measurements and everything so you don't have to take notes while I actually cook. I'm gonna add just a little bit more olive oil. Oh, I love that smell. Is there anything better? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add our eight ounces of ground beef. Get that mixed in. So our ground beef is almost all browned up. When it is done in just a second or two, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the fat. There's not much, but I'm gonna go ahead and drain it on some paper towels, and then I'll get it back in the pot and we'll add the rest of our ingredients. Next, we're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. So we're gonna add in one can of petite diced tomatoes. We're also gonna add one can of white kidney beans. And I poured off the liquid on top, but I didn't drain or rinse them. And then the same thing with one can of pinto beans. We're also gonna add two teaspoons of chili powder and then one and a half teaspoons of ground cumin. Also gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. All right, I'm gonna turn this back up to about medium heat again. And go ahead and give everything a stir. And lastly, we're gonna add two cups of dry macaroni noodles. And the macaroni noodles are just gonna cook in this liquid and everything is gonna be delicious. I'm gonna pop the lid on here and let this simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes but I'm gonna keep an eye on it to see if I need to add any more liquid. And if I do, I'll just add a little bit more chicken broth. You just wanna make sure the elbow noodles have enough liquid to cook in, cause they're gonna soak up a lot of that. All right, so my noodles are cooked. So now I'm just gonna add some cheddar cheese. I like to add some in with our noodles as well. Probably about a cup. And then I'll add a little bit on top as well. And lastly, we're gonna add just a little bit of parsley for some color on top. I'm gonna place the lid on just for a couple minutes and we're ready to eat.
right, so before we hop into that chicken and orzo casserole, I do want to take a quick second and tell you guys about ButcherBox. And I was so excited when they reached out to me because you guys know if you've been here any length of time, I am pretty picky about our meat and especially our quality of meat. So finding out there was a resource out there that offered all sorts of high quality meat like free range organic chicken, grass fed ground beef, wild caught salmon, which is so hard to find around here. That was so exciting to me and I knew I wanted to give them a try. So if you've never heard of Butcher Box before, basically that's what it is, an online butcher box. You go onto their website and they have different plans you can choose from. I believe they have like an all beef box, beef and chicken, which is what I choose. I'm gonna show y'all everything that came in my box in just a second. They also have a custom box that I think you can pick each individual you know cut of meat and what type of meat that you want they have pretty much an option for anybody they also have a small box and a large box depending on the size of your family and how long you want it to last for and the value of the meat is unbeatable the average price is only about six dollars per meal so if you're someone like me who already puts an importance on your quality of meats that you're buying it really is a perfect deal and it makes it makes it so easy to get all of that in one place. You can also choose how often you would like to receive your box of meat, like I just said. And if you don't want to receive any, you can cancel at any time with no penalties. So once you go onto their website and sign up, you will choose what type of box that you want, what size box, and then you can choose your specific cuts if you choose. And then after that, it ships super quick. I got mine in a matter of a couple days. It came wrapped super nice in an eco-friendly box, which is also kind of cool. Everything was really, really cold. It comes with dry ice in there, so everything is nice and frozen. And it also always ships free, so that's just an added little bonus. So really quick, I do want to share the mission and values from ButcherBox and I am going to read it off of here because it's really important and I want to tell you guys. So the mission of ButcherBox believes in better. We deliver 100% grass fed, grass, grass finished ground beef or just beef in general, free range organic chicken, heritage breed pork, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep. You can trust that the high quality meat that you put on your table each day is better for you and your family, the farmers, the animals welfare, and the businesses involved, and our planet. So that's just so awesome. They go above and beyond to care about everything and everybody involved. They care about the well-being of the animals. They go to farmers and fishermen for all of the meats and I just love that. So I will have all of Butcher Box's info down in the description box for you. Make sure when you're done watching this video, you head down there and click the link because I know you guys are gonna wanna check this out. Right now, they're running a really cool promotion where when you do sign up, you're gonna get $10 off and you're gonna get free bacon for life. So how cool is that? You will get a free package of bacon in every single box as long as you keep your subscription. I think that's really awesome. See so you guys definitely want to check that out. So here is most of the meat I got in my box and I chose to get the mixed, no not the mixed box, I chose the beef and chicken box but I just didn't pick my cuts. I let them decide. So anyway, this is all I got except for a couple things. I had a pack of bacon. We already cooked that and it was so good. So delicious. Um, and of course, I'm about to use another package of ground beef. But I also got an organic whole chicken and I can't decide if we will do this on the rotisserie outside. Maybe when we have a warm day coming up or I might roast it in the oven. We'll see. But then I also got a three pack of the organic free range bone in skin on chicken thighs. These are going to be so good. Not sure how I'll cook these yet. And of course, another pack of ground beef back there. And I always try to get grass-fed ground beef no matter what. So I love that they have this on their website and it's 85.15, which I also really love. So I got that. And then also we got a grass-fed top sirloin cap. And y'all, I'll be completely honest, I have never cooked one of these before. 
So I looked up some recipes just to kind of get some ideas of what I can do with it. And a lot of these kind of roasted them and then made like a really good chimichurri sauce, which I've also never done. So I'm actually really excited to try this out. I'm probably going to do something like that with it. But you guys will have to let me know if you've ever cooked with this particular cut of meat. I'm excited to try something new. And then we also got two grass-fed flat iron steaks. So Darren and I both immediately thought some really good tacos with these. That's going to be so delicious. I'm already so excited about that. So we have two of them. And then like I said, we had the pack of uncured sugar-free bacon. And y'all, it was so good. So I'm so excited about all of this. I cannot wait to order another box. I especially want to try their salmon. All right, so now we're going to go back in time a few weeks. It's going to look a little bit different. I'll be cooking in the camper. I'll also look a little bit different. But now let's go make some chicken and orzo casserole. All right, so I'm going to show you an easy way to make your own homemade cream of chicken soup instead of using the canned kind. So my pot looks dirty because I just cooked my chicken breast in here. So it's a perfect thing to use to make our cream of chicken and just add flavor to it. And I saved my broth whenever I cooked my chicken as well. But you can of course just use, you know, bought from the store chicken broth. And I also have some of this better than bouillon. I'm gonna use this also with my chicken broth. This is just gonna enhance the flavor a little bit more. So, in my pot, I'm gonna melt two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna whisk that together. And this part does go pretty fast, like I always tell y'all. It's okay if it looks kinda crumbly at first. Now, I have a half a cup of milk over here ready to go. I'm just gonna pour it in a little at a time. And turn down my heat a little bit. And we're gonna continue to whisk this together. And you want this to be thick because you wanna think of cream of chicken soup that you do buy in a can, it's pretty thick. So we're gonna keep whisking it to get out all of those clumps. We don't want any of those. Just start with a little bit of broth. And you know, you can always add more. And once I get it to about the consistency I'm looking for, it's a little bit thicker than say like a gravy or a sauce. So now that I got it pretty much to the consistency I want, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this better than bouillon. And this just enhances the chicken flavor. And it looks and smells just like cream of chicken soup. Actually, it smells a little bit better. All right, we also are gonna add a few seasonings, just a little bit of salt. That chicken broth is pretty salty. Add some black pepper. And then I like to add just a tiny bit of poultry seasoning. And that is pretty much it. That's all you do and now you have homemade cream of chicken, all with ingredients that you know. And this makes, I would say, about one can of cream of chicken. So you could easily make, you know, a bigger batch and have a few cans ready for the week if you had a few recipes you wanted to make or something like that. But this will be enough for what I need it for. So that's it, we have homemade cream of chicken. All right, so here is all my components. I have my chicken that I cooked up and went ahead and cubed up as well. A small onion dice. I have some orzo, and you could also use rice for this. That's what we make a lot of times. I'll have this recipe down below. And then we're going to um, add cream of chicken that I made this morning as well. And then we're going to do some cornflakes and butter on top. It's going to bake in the oven for about 30 minutes, and it's so good. So since I had all the components prepped already, I just dumped everything into my little pan and stirred it all together. I added in that homemade creamy chicken soup. It worked out perfectly. It was so good. 
And this recipe is such a crowd pleaser. Everyone likes it. It's the perfect comfort food, whether you use orzo or rice. We make this a good bit, especially in the cooler months. And I did also add some salt and pepper and a little bit of milk just to kind of thin it out. And then I added my cornflakes on top with a little bit of melted butter. For some reason, I did not get a clip of that. And then I'm gonna show you a separate clip at the end of what it looks like because I also forgot to get a clip this night. Alrighty y'all, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for cooking along with me. I hope that you will give these recipes a try and I hope you're having a very Merry Christmas. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all. Oh my gosh y'all, I about put powdered sugar in here instead of flour, that would have not been good. And perfect for this time of year. Perfect when you just want a big old bowl of love. Was that cheesy? I don't know if that was cheesy, but this chili mac was. Oh my God, bye. Bye y'all, bye. Mm.